We're going on vacation to the Bay of Silence on Film Threat Reviews. I'm Alan Ng. I'm with Zoriana Kitt, and today we review the Bay of Silence. When Will discovers his wife Rosalind and their three children have suddenly disappeared, he sets off on a frantic search across Europe. He locates them in a remote village in France and discovers their baby son has mysteriously died. Now Will must uncover the truth about what happened to his son and about and the mystery of his wife's past. This is a film by Paula van der Oost, uh, stars Clay Bang from The Burnt Orange Heresy, Olga Kurylenko, and Brian Cox. So, um, Zoriana, tell me, what did you think of The Bay of Silence? You know, I on the surface, I liked it. So the movie kept me intrigued because I really wanted to see how everything was played out. But once I got to the end and I saw how the whole thing played out, I was a little bit disappointed. I um, I thought it was going to be more mysterious or or that that things would go deeper, uh, but but it didn't. So yeah. all in all, I was disappointed. But the disappointment didn't hit me until the very end because I kept thinking something something so amazing and twisty would occur. Yeah. You know, we should probably uh, mention that the story of the Bay of Silence really has to do with, I would say, um, PTSD, uh, trauma, uh, also has to do with um, with grief and loss. And, um, and so, you know, as a father, I was engaged in this story. The, just this idea that um, uh, Clay Banks' character, Will, he finds the love of his life, marries her. She already has two daughters of her own. Um, they start a happy family, and then suddenly something horrible happens. And that's when she disappears. Uh, mysterious notes. And then when he finally finds her, their son is dead. And, um, you know, honestly, I felt more connected to the story than I was with the characters. And I think that that posed a problem, you know. Um, you know, a, a dead child, uh, that, that really got to me. And, um, you know, and so what we're dealing with here is, uh, Rosalind's trauma. Uh, he has a wife who has had trauma that he didn't know about and we have a dead son and it just seemed like the focus shifted to the wife's trauma to where the death of the son kind of took a back seat to the story. Yeah, I agree. And I agree in some of the ways that that death was handled by the father was also a little bit uh, weird. And yeah. I wasn't crazy about all the characters. I just felt that none of them were as well-rounded as I would have liked them to have been, to be emotionally invested in the story. I was, yeah. I was invested in, in uh, the, you know, the, the ride because I wanted to know where it was going. Mm -hmm but I, I did not like the ride itself now that the trip is done and I'm looking back on it because it, yeah. just, it just didn't give me any, it didn't move me in a way that I should have been moved. Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to keep throwing the dad card here, but you know, what happened to the son as a, as a father it was like, I, I don't know that I would necessarily handle it as cool as he did. Um, you know, it was, you know, and I'm not, I'm not even talking about the fake dead baby he had to hold. Uh, well, that, <laughs> the, that was the other thing, it was so obviously fake, Alan. It was yeah, you know, but so I'll, I'll give a pass on that because I don't necessarily want to see a realistic dead baby. They could have just had it swaddled and you didn't have to show a doll's yeah. hand, but. Yeah, like they did in Sniper. Um, American Sniper, I should say. Um, yeah, you know, it, you know, I've I've been in situations where um, where you're dealing with a person trying trying to show compassion to a person who's gone through a severe trauma, and I you know and honestly I think that was played out well and played out realistic in, in the sense that the Rosalind character, um, you know how depressed she got, depressed to the point of being almost paralyzed um, from from the memories of her past. And and to the point of neglect of her children, and but you know again they, they the the shift of of that that was the more important thing as opposed to hey don't forget there's there's still a dead baby in, in the picture here. 
Wow, the dead baby really was a big deal for you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird, but even growing up, uh, you know, watching a person die on screen affects me in a way that it's like, well, no, a person really did die, and I think I still hold on to a little bit of that, even yeah. today. First of all, I do think it's kind of a big reveal to say that there was a dead baby because we don't really know that it's dead until it's dead. You kind of yeah. hold out hope. Um, but, um, uh, and of course it was very tragic, but um, I felt like her disappearance happened so quickly that things escalated so quickly mm -hmm. uh, that it just, it just didn't seem proportionate to what would happen in real life. But then again, you know, when the character endures so much trauma, you, it's hard to say what's proportionate and what isn't. But the actors, I do yeah. want to talk about her. You know, definitely Olga Kurienko. Um, Clay, you know, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to stereotype here, but maybe being British, he's he he's not overacting as much or he's not emoting as much as I hoped he would. Um, I, I just had a hard time really connecting to him. <laughs> well, you know, for me, it's like, the only three movies I've seen him in have been set in the art world. The Square was set in a museum. Uh, Burnt Orange Heresy was set in the art world. And this film as well, set in the art world. So uh, I would like to see him do something else that's not set in the art world. Yeah. And the other thing is uh, about the story. I, I, I got the, I figured out the ending pretty early on the film, especially with the appearance of a, of a certain character that affects how a, a story plays out at that point. Cause when you kind of see things coming, you know, the, the thrills kind of uh, lessen at that point. Yeah. 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 So I, I think the, to me, the problem with the movie really is it's, it's this idea of balance, you know, to me, the two stories or the two big, big uh, story points of the baby and, and the wife. And then, um, you know, and then also how it kind of paced itself out throughout the film. Yeah, everyone seemed to have forgotten about that baby at the end. Anyway, it was, it was <laughs> That's true. Okay, so um, if I were to guess, I'm going to say you gave this a uh, a five. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to because yeah. I really like the actors and I really like their performances, but I, I was ultimately disappointed in the film. Uh, I would guess that. You might have even given it a four, gone lower even. You know, I'm, you know, with, with the acting, uh, and you know, and and I think how they dealt with the trauma, uh, I would be the same as you. And I would give it as a five as well. So that is our review of the Bay of Silence. Uh, go to filmthread.com for more uh, news and reviews of independent films. And with that, let's get out of here. <laughs>